Welcome. You are watching Line Screw One. Well, hello, tubers. Hope you're doing well. Today, uh, I'm going to give you a little tip. If you're ever doing a fake hike and you get too far away, the fake hike accidentally becomes a real hike. That's almost what's happening to me right now. <laughs> I climb a hill right now. Ooh, it's going to be wicked. I'm going to be pooped. At least I got some nice stairs cut out for me here. Anyway, I'm really liking this uh, rural living. It's uh, quite refreshing. The beautiful thing about life in a very small town, and I'm talking real small town. I'm not talking like one of these like middle town America, you know, 15,000 people. No, I'm talking small towns where the entire phone book is laminated on one piece of paper. There's something to be said about these towns. And up here in the hinterland of Canada, we got hundreds of these small towns. And life here is about reality. It's not like the city people. See, city people are more interested in going to the gym and wine bars and, you know, extramarital affairs. <laughs> See, a small town, if you have an extramarital affair, everybody's going to know about it and you're gonna have to move. You probably have to move to the city, which they don't want to. So that's why they don't do that. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, uh, people here in small towns up in Canada, life is hard. It's cold up here. I'm at 4,000 foot elevation. It's cold in the winter, really cold. All the lakes freeze and you could actually even drive your car on them <laughs> if you wanted to. When life is hard in a small town, you ain't got time for any of the woke stuff. The woke stuff in small towns is a complete joke. See, in a small town like this, there's no such thing as what's called a gym or a gym membership. Because men up in these towns, they work for a living. They do real work. They work with their hands. They work with their back. Yeah, they're real men. After doing that 12 hours a day, you think they're gonna go to a gym? No, they're not. And as for the women, women here have real skills. They know how to can food. They know how to cook. Country folk don't care about French cuisine. They don't care about that wonderful restaurant that you ran into on the Champs-Elysees. They don't give a shit about that. And they're just straight shooting honest people. And the lack of graffiti in small towns. Mm. Love it. I'm telling you, if you started to try to stencil a Black Lives Matter <laughs> on a building here, somebody whoop your ass for the graffiti. <laughs> of course, small town people believe that you got the right to have an opinion, of course, but you ain't got the right to vandalize other people's property. That's what it's all about in a small town. And where I'm at right now really reminds me of Whitehorse, Yukon, where I grew up in the 70s really very similar to me you know when you go into a grocery store around here people look at you and go you ain't from around here boy <laughs> of course they don't use that accent <laughs> but you get the picture when you come to a small town everybody knows everybody There's something refreshing about that that's why neighbors don't steal from neighbors that's why i could actually leave my rv unlocked at the campground because the locals that camp there don't want to steal because they live here. <laughs> Small town people, they really just don't care how woke you are. They're just too busy trying to make a living. And in fact, some of the smartest people move out of the big cities and come to places like this because your money goes so much further. If you lived in downtown Vancouver, a small one bedroom or studio apartment, if you're lucky to get one, <laughs> It's going to cost you maybe six, seven hundred thousand dollars, maybe more in a good neighborhood, maybe close to a million dollars. You can come here with that same kind of money, buy two or three houses, or maybe one hell of a ranch with a whole lot of land. And you get yourself a job out in the mine or maybe uh, in the forestry industry, you can do quite well. Real jobs actually have real wages. But line screw, some people are gonna say, I wanna be a professional barista and serve coffee at Starbucks for my entire life. And I say, salute to you. <laughs> Most of these towns I'm talking about where I've been hanging out, they don't even have coffee shops. They might have a restaurant that serves coffee, but ain't no Starbucks around here. That's for those uh, yellow belly liberals. <laughs> Now, I will say that I do eat a lot better 
in the rural hinterland. For example, there are no fast food options around me at all. In fact, <laughs> the only fast food I've eaten in weeks is Kentucky Fried Chicken and I had to drive a long ways on my motorcycle to get it. Thankfully, 100 miles on the motorcycle only cost me about $7 in fuel. So, obviously, I'm not going to do that every day. The funny thing is that I've noticed about hardcore city people, some of them, they just uh, feel sorry for country people. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know people that grew up in big cities around the world, like say New Delhi and you know India. They'd rather move back to New Delhi than to live in a small town like where I'm at right now. See, because if you want a, a, a city job like a feminist rights attorney, there ain't no use of you trying to practice that kind of law in one of these towns. It's useless. That's a useless skill. Say with all the stupid little scams that people can pull in uh, the big cities, you know, a little bit of fraud, investment fraud, insurance fraud. That don't work out too well here in these small towns, especially when everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows your business too. A lot of city people are afraid of everybody knowing their business because a lot of city people have things to hide. <laughs> Country folk, not so much. Yeah, sure, maybe they messed up that tuna casserole last week and that's probably the biggest scandal that they had in their entire week. Small remote Canadian towns are more impressed if you got the latest, greatest pickup truck. You come rolling into one of these towns with a new Ferrari, Nobody even know what the hell that is other than they know that the fact that you don't belong in this town there, boy. <laughs> and good luck trying to get any of your fancy city import jobs <laughs> repaired in a small town. You're going to be waiting a long time. But if you need a uh, fuel pump for an F-150, no problem. You know, a small town only needs one restaurant, one gas station, one bank machine, one grocery store. You need the basics. That's it. You don't need a wine tasting bar. You don't need an oxygen bar. You don't need hot yoga. So you see, small towns are all about what you need, not what you think you need. And that's what life's all about. Not filling your head with all these sort of stupid woke ideas that the city slickers are always talking about. So that's the end of my rant today. So in the meantime, folks, stay safe, keep your wheels in the ground. I'll talk to you soon, over and out. I got you, I got you, I got you